This is the Scoop for Friday. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. Florida Attorney General Ashley Moody has filed a complaint in district court against acting FEMA Administrator Deanne Criswell and a now-fired FEMA worker. According to FEMA, the employee instructed staff to avoid homes in Florida with Trump signs in their yards when carrying out Hurricane Milton relief. Moody says by filing the lawsuit, she hopes to make sure all Americans can get the disaster relief they need after storms regardless of their political affiliation. Criswell has since apologized, calling the defendant's actions a clear violation of FEMA's core values and principles and reprehensible. In response to the lawsuit, FEMA says it does not comment on pending litigation. The news comes as Florida prepares for what could become Hurricane Sarah next week. Governor Ron DeSantis says Florida Surgeon General Joseph Lanapo should serve as a top health official in President-elect Donald Trump's administration. WMNF's Chris Young tells us other familiar names are being floated for the head role in the Department of Health and Human Services. DeSantis posted to X, formerly Twitter, encouraging users to reshare if they want to see Lanapo serve as the Secretary of Health and Human Services in the new Trump administration. Ladipo has come under fire for promoting vaccine hesitancy and spreading misinformation about the COVID-19 vaccine. In February, he caught heat after telling South Florida parents they had a choice whether or not to send their unvaccinated kids to school during a measles outbreak. This led to U.S. Representative Debbie Wasserman Schultz calling for him to resign at a press conference earlier this year. But from where I stand, Surgeon General Ladipo needs to go. Robert F. Kennedy Jr., former Louisiana Governor Bobby Jindal, and neurosurgeon Dr. Ben Carson, who have all unsuccessfully ran for president, are also gunning for the role. Chris Young, WMNF News. U.S. Senator Republican Rick Scott lost his bid to become the Senate's majority leader Wednesday. GOP lawmakers instead chose Senator John Thune of South Dakota. Scott, a former two-term governor who was easily re-elected to a second term last week, only received 13 votes in an initial round of voting. Scott wrote in a post on X after the vote, quote, We will never stop fighting to turn our country around, advance President Trump's agenda and make America great again. Scott was a frequent critic of longtime leader Senator Mitch McConnell and lost a bid to become the GOP leader in 2022. This year, Scott campaigned for the post as a loyal lieutenant to Trump, saying Monday during an appearance on Fox News that, quote, I believe I'm going to win because I represent exactly what the Trump team wants and what the Trump team needs. New College of Florida will offer a class titled The Woke Movement this spring. The course description says the woke movement is an illiberal kind of cult. Andrew Doyle, comedian and conservative political satirist, will be teaching the course as a month-long individualized studies program. Doyle serves as a presidential scholar for New College. The small school in Sarasota recently updated its general education requirements to no longer include sociology or gender studies. President of the American Association of University Professors Connecticut Conference of Sean Jaffer says these types Types of classes, along with other changes, will affect new colleges' educational value. There is the effect on the specific disciplines in new college, but there is also the effect on the larger educational environment and experience that new college is now offering, which is going to be completely different from what it was before. DeSantis has said Florida is where woke goes to die in campaign speeches across the state. When Hurricane Milton shredded the top of Tropicana Field last month, it meant the Rays needed a new home until the 2026 season. Now, the Tampa Bay Times reports the team is planning to play next year's games at Tampa Steinbrenner Field, the New York Yankees' spring training home. In a press release, the Rays say the location is, quote, the best prepared facility in the Tampa Bay region to host regular season Major League Baseball games. However, some of the Pinellas County commissioners wanted the team to remain in the county and play at Clearwater's Bay Care Ballpark, home of the Philadelphia Phillies. 
The commissioners have the leverage of voting against the bonds needed to finance the new stadium. And now they're rethinking how they'll vote since the team left the county, and that could kill the deal. Steinbrenner has the largest capacity of the other fields, and it also requires the fewest upgrades to reach MLB standards. The National Weather Service says there's a 20% chance of rain this morning, then partly sunny skies late morning into afternoon with a high near 82, clear tonight with lows around 58. I'm Megan Bowman with the WMNF News Headlines. This is The Scoop, recorded at WMNF Tampa.